I mean, it's such an iconic building. It looks like a castle. It's not surprising then that um, Game of Thrones decided to use this castle as part of its set um, for Winterfell. Hello, I'm Maliki Conway. I'm an archaeologist with the National Trust. Today I'm going to talk about three castles that we look after in our care. So there was a lull in castle building after the Anglo-Normans and the native Irish and the Anglo-Normans then resumed castle building again about a hundred years later or a century later. So in the 14th century you start to see appearance of a new type of architecture. It's more domestic, residential and it's smaller. It's not military architecture anymore and it's like the building behind me. It's called a tower house. The tower house behind me is Old Castle Ward. This was the first residence of the Ward family in Ireland. Now we don't know its exact construction date, but it's certainly a building that from all the architectural characteristics of it, is easily datable to the 1500s, maybe even the early 1600s. Now we know the Ward family arrived from Cheshire in England here, not as part of a plantation, but as settlers. And so they acquired this land from the Earl of Kildare. And it's quite possible that the castle was already pre-existing, so it may well have been the Earl of Kildare put a castle on this site to, to help fortify it. Now, one of the main things you notice is that there's a green earthen sort of abutment to the front of the, the castle. Um, and that actually signifies where the original ground surface was um, back in the uh, 1500s and even the 1600s. Well, this castle, this tower house, um, was first and foremost, it was residential, but it also had sort of defensive capabilities built into it. Um, so the tower stands two stories high and it has a basement level. And it also then had a parapet at the very roof line so that you could basically defend the structure from above. Well, what qualifies Dunseverick as a castle is because it has ruins of a small two-story uh, tower at its sort of southern tip huge uh, importance and the reason for that is because this has always been a fortification. First and foremost Dunseverick is, is a coastal sort of promontory fort. It's on this huge basalt stack which sits imposingly right on the, the edge of the coast and it has these sort of um, shores either side of it on which galleys and ships could land. It's of a tower house type so a bit like Castle Ward um, it's two stories and it probably had um, a, a, an attic to it and maybe a parapet around it, but on a much, much smaller scale. The real sort of story about Dunseverick is that although the site's never been archaeologically investigated, we have a lot of references from our, our history and our annals um, that keep mentioning the site. The first time we sort of see it mentioned with someone who we know from history is when St. Patrick is mentioned. The end of Dunseverick. <laughs> um, we know that it was attacked on two latter occasions. First, probably in the 1640s by um, Scottish army uh, under General Robert Munro. And then again in the 1650s um, when Cromwellian troops who were in Ireland at that time, then arrived at Dunseverick. And we think that that is possibly the last time the fortification as it was would have been used. But it is one of the most picturesque ruins that we have in our, in our properties in Northern Ireland. Well, we're standing at Crom Old Castle and it is deserving of the, the status of a castle. Right behind me, you can see the central block of this with it's sort of like almost two, if not going up to three stories in height. The story of this castle is actually quite a bloody one. The first time that it is attacked and, um, uh, and destroyed is in the 1641 rebellion, but it is rebuilt. And by the time we get to 1689, the castle is again sieged on two occasions in 1689, the first in March and then the second in July. There is all these stories that were written down um, around what happened at the siege, but we know around about 30 to 40 men lost their lives. And we believe that a tree ring just located not far from the castle here is actually the site that marks where all the, um, the fallen from those sieges were buried. The interesting thing about the two U's in there, um, they're mentioned in the 1730s and at that stage they were said that they were at least 70 years old. Um, so they would have been there and witness to the siege that was happening on the castle in 1689. 
Having survived two sieges, the castle actually finally succumbed to fire, so it burnt down in uh, uh, 1764. And it was ironic as well that when the, the first Baron Crichton was coming back um, to the castle in, in uh, 1764, and that's actually where there's a picture of the castle. And so that shows the castle as it was um, prior to the fire.